Oh, hold on. <coughs> that was the wrong thing, actually. I can just... This is, uh, I can just start episode six now. I, I don't, I don't need to go here. Uh, back to the title. He knows. He knows everything. Okay. Now. I'll just read this again. Good morning. Now the curtain shall finally rise on a game presented by that battler summer. Though battler summer managed to successfully and spectacularly fill the enormous role of game master, let us bear witness to this fight from the opposite side of the chessboard. There no longer is a difficulty level. This is no longer a hint, but a confession. But is it? Is it really? Maybe the whole episode is going to be about how Batla did everything, and then the next two episodes will be about how he actually didn't do everything at all. Good lord! Oh no, wait. It's just nice music. Okay, a beautiful glow shone in from the skylight over the Grand Cathedral. The place was somehow different from the way it had been during the witch's trial. The decorations had changed. Now, lots of heads from Erica were hanging from the ceiling. Now, the several pleasantly sparkling white ribbons that adorned it while... Uh, thin like razors, but they trailed beautifully in the air. Flowers were arranged all over in a way that would make any place look cheerful. It was like how a single drop of impure water can spoil an entire cask of wine. Just the presence of those flowers, those ribbons, and the red carpet that ran down the center of the room made it hard to believe that this was the same place Oshiro Miyanatsuhi had been falsely accused of a crime. It had truly become a wedding chapel. Hold on, what? Who the hell are you? And here I was thinking we wouldn't get any more people. Okay, who are you? Uh, love is generous. Love is merciful. Uh, who are you? Are you like the octo the, the the squid sister from Splatoon, but not as squids? I mean, look at it. They kind of fit, don't they? <laughs> it's the... <laughs> it's the squid sisters from Pl Splatoon. I... yeah, it kind of fits. Love does, love, does, love does not envy, it does not boast. These words, spoken by two demons who seem to be in charge of this gathering, are part of a ceremony for making an oath of love before the eyes of God. Of course, in this wedding celebrated by demons, there was no priest in sight. Yeah, these came before Splatoon, I'm pretty sure. Instead, there stood the witch who controls miracles. Wait, is she gonna marry Erika now? <laughs> Erika would probably love it. In sickness and in health, yeah, a wife's true job is to be supportive in times of sickness. Isn't that right, Erica? What, she really is gonna marry Erica? <laughs> yes, my master. <laughs> Your shoes are so delicious today. That looks good on you. What a fitting outfit, f outfit for one who has conquered the bri bridegroom. I, for a second I read bridge room. <laughs> I was like, why would she conquer the bridge room? What bridge room? <laughs> Weirdness intensifies indeed. I'm honored, my master. The bride, standing on the carpeted path, was Furodo Erika. The groom's face couldn't be seen. As long as it's not Battler. The bride's outfit certainly was a pure white wedding dress. Her veil represented both the white of God's blessings and the white of a demon's cruelty. A great many goat nobles, witches and demons were gathered for this wedding. If only their heads hadn't been those of goats, it would probably have seemed a very refined crowd worthy of this great cathedral. I'd expect no less of you, Byrne. The stuff you managed to think up is always so twisted. A wife supporting her ailing husband. Isn't that a lovely story? It suits you well, Erika. 
No, it doesn't. How in the fuck... Does that suit Erika in any way? And congratulations to you too, Mr. Groom. At that point, Berncastel stared straight into the groom's eyes. The groom didn't answer. His eyes were gray, his lips would mutter something from time to time, but no one could tell if the words meant anything. I'm sorry, how old is Erika again? Did we ever learn that? Okay, she's not here yet. She's a witch now. I don't know. She always looked like a child to me. Well, not like a child, child like Maria, but at least she didn't look like an adult who would get uh, married. <coughs> hey, are you listening? You people? She spoke to the groom in the plural. Of course, there was only one groom. And of course, the gray-eyed groom didn't answer. So even though you can hear her, you can't answer? Don't worry, okay? Petla son? Uh, what? No, no, no. I don't want to marry her, please. C can you just not do that? It's okay, I'll just take everything you are and trample it into the ground. Yeah, because that's what marriage is all about, right? <laughs> the Witch of Miracles sneered with an evil smile that even a demon would shudder to look at. Even that sneer provoked no response from Bella's dim eyes. You know, the last thing I read was Battler is the Gay Master, so, um, <laughs> excuse me. People live for the sake of love. Therefore, today you have fulfilled the purpose of your lives. Oh, how great is the power to live, the power of love. I pray that the brightness of this day blesses these two for all time. Just give it a rest already, you demons. What comes next? The couple will now make an oath of eternal love. After that, they will exchange rings. Duh. On Butler's hand was a ring bearing the seal of the one-winged eagle, proof that he was the territory lord of this world. And on Erica's finger was a diamond ring that could not be shattered by any miracle. Diamonds signify an internal bond. However, in Greek, the word diamond simply means unbreakable. So that one movie with, uh... What's his damn name again? You know, played in Pulp Fiction, played in uh, Die Hard. Bruce Willis, exactly. So that movie would just be called Diamond in Greek. <laughs> Erika wasn't going to love Bella forever. She just wanted to rule over him as her eternal property. This wedding was being performed for the sole purpose of defiling Bella. Don't worry. I won't love you forever. Actually, I will just love you for um, no time at all. After all, the point of the ceremony is to make you submit to me. Your heart will be shut inside an inescapable closed room forever where I photo to Erica the detective and the Witch of Truth will command it. Can we please have a say in this? Um, your position is territorial lord and your ring will become mine. Can't get... Huh? What was that? Because, uh, can't get out. Wasn't he, like, all-powerful at the end of episode 5? So, why is this happening now? Yeah, I'll bet you can't get out of that closed room. After all, you made it yourself. You'll suffer in that room for all eternity, and I'll remain by your side as your wife forever, getting to enjoy that look of anguish on your face all by myself. I'll defile you forever. Usido mia bella. You know, you should probably look for some, uh... more healthy hobbies. For your own mental sake.
<laughs> Welcome to the usual what the hell is going on part. <laughs> I think I have started. Maybe. Uh, never mind. I'm just. I thought episode 6 was all about everybody trying to throw Erika into the sea and. Battling over who could throw her the farthest. At least that's what Demon suggested. I will be all for it. Oh, she was in the. Was the same opening? And she was in it already in. Episode 5. Huh, okay. But, didn't that opening play just after we saw her for the first time when she accused Natsuhi? All that could be heard was the sound of the wind, just like the title screen. A sound of misfortune bringing sadness and unease to all who heard it. Slowly, I came back to my senses. I finally regained consciousness on top of a bed with a firm mattress. Where was this again? Please don't let it be the wedding night with Erika. I can't remember where this is, but I can vaguely recall that I must not remain here. <coughs> the room was dimly lit. There was a light on, but that just made the darkness and eeriness of the room more apparent. There were no certain... Uh, no curtains over the window, but it was too dark outside to see anything beyond it. If I squinted into that pitch blackness, it felt as though I could see the witch of the forest peeking back at me from the darkness, and I averted my gaze from the window in fear. I can't see or hear it, but I get the feeling that if I leave this room it will be bright and warm, and someone else will be there for me. <laughs> I want to get to where everyone else is as soon as I can. Bad memories from when I was very young began to well up. Horrible, harsh memories of when I started dozing off during a family gathering and was put to sleep in some room I didn't know. I remember waking up there incredibly lonely and sobbing. <coughs> I must not remain in this room. I just want to get out of here quickly. Once that thought crossed my mind, I didn't want to stay in the room a second longer than I had to. I'm scared. It's creepy. Where is everyone? I want to get out of here right now. I opened the door, trying to leave the room. A pleasant glow snuck in through the crack of the door. As I had thought, the corridor was filled with a comforting light. I couldn't actually hear them, but I could sense that far away people were enjoying themselves. I'm sure everyone is gathered in the room across from this one. I've been shut up in this lonely, creepy room all alone. I should go, quickly. As soon as I thought this, a merciless metallic sound rang out and the door refused to open any further. The chain had been set. I've always hated chain locks. You can open a normal lock just by twisting, but chain locks are built in an annoying way and I couldn't work them easily. So I've hated them ever since I was very young. Imagine, Aaron, one night, you suddenly wake up, but you realize you're not in your bed. You're in the middle of the forest, and this music can be heard in the distance. How about that? See? Even this chain is causing me trouble, and I just can't get it undone. Why is this happening? I just want to leave this creepy room right away. Just on the other side of this thin door, everything is bathed in a warm light. I can't undo it, I just can't undo this chain. <coughs> the more desperate I grew, the more that unsettling darkness seemed to be closing in on my back, and the more frightened I became. Then I finally noticed, there's something wrong with this chain. Yes, there is a chain, but this isn't a chain lock. 
This is just a chain staked into the door, preventing it from opening any further. In other words, it isn't made to be opened. What the hell is going on? Who'd do something like this, damn it? No matter what I did, no matter how much I struggled, I couldn't pull out the stake or undo the chain or break the mechanism. This door was just a demon's mouth, made to trick me into thinking it would open before crushing my hopes. Even so, if only I could o just open this door somehow, I could get out into that pleasant corridor. This desire forced me to keep my hand glued to the doorknob. Couldn't you just scream when you can open the door a bit? But it was useless. Both the chain and the stake were firm, and no matter how much I clattered them about, there was no chance of the door opening any further. Even though I could see the pleasant hallway through the crack, I had no chance of opening the door any further. Maybe someone will come if I yell. Maybe the door can be opened easily from the outside. When I thought this, I tried to call out to someone, but I couldn't make the words come out. I could mouth, someone come here, but no voice left my lips. What's going on? Someone come! Why can't I cry out? Help me, help me, help me! The mere fact that I can't say help me out loud is even scarier. If I turn around, the witch gazing into the room from the darkness outside might be inside the room this time, standing right behind me. Frightened. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Someone help me, someone help me! Can't get out, can't get out. Let me out of this room, help me! I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, let me out, 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 let me out! It sounds like they've arrived, lady. Huh? Oh. <coughs> huh? The fuck? What are you doing here? Amakusa ran his finger down my cheek. In an instant, I awoke from the doze I had just been in. Huh? What? How are we? Huh? Okay. I glared at Amakusa for waking me up in such a creepy way, but he just pretended not to notice. He ran his fingers down her cheek. Okay. Where is this? It feels like a parlor in some dignified person's house. But I have no memory of this place at all. Where is this? And why am I... You still have a sleep, lady? Yeah, sorry. Where are we? Huh? Apparently he hadn't expected me to forget something like that just because I wasn't fully awake yet. For once I agreed with him. Why am I in some parlor that I don't recognize? <laughs> the sound of the footsteps from the they Amakusa had mentioned had come right up to the opposite side of the door. I could hear conversing voices. Is that a woman? Or maybe it's Genji. Judging by the coffee and snacks laid in front of me, I was the guest here. In that case, I'd better remember why I came here. Or at least who it was I came to visit. Who am I? Usirumi Aenji. Who's the man standing behind me? Amakusa Juza. Former guard of Aphas, fundamentally a thrill seeker, willing to uh, hear the same thing as before. Uh, final descendant of the Shiromiya family, 12 years in the future. During her journey to reach, reach Rokanjima while evading pursuers from the Sumadena family, she becomes. Overwhelmed by a world of an impossible memory, she reached several truths in the previous games and possesses the power to act as an observer. It seems that witches who hope for the worst for her are great in numbers, as are those who wish to become her master. The man who used to be my guard long ago. He's now the bodyguard Okonogi assigned to me. In that case, is this after Aunt Eva's death, when I've thrown off my pursuers, on that journey to find out what happened twelve years ago? Is that how it went? Do I really have a memory like this? After a knock, the door opened, and the person I must have come here to meet entered along with an assistant. How wonderful. Even after seeing her face, I can't remember who she is. Oh, sincere apologies for keeping you waiting. Hachijo Toya is here. That's a relief. The assistant introduced her to me first, and I finally remembered who she was. She? I thought it was a he. 
Excuse me, but are you? Who are you? That's right. I am Hachijo Toya. The hell? What is it? Eight castles, 18? <laughs> Eight castle eighteen. <laughs> okay, yeah. The magazines were all talking about your book signing event. Supposedly a mysterious male author showed up wearing sunglasses and a mask. Never thought you'd be a woman. What's the deal? That was just a double arranged for by the editing department. I was the helper standing behind him at the book signing. <laughs> well, there's a shock. Shock. I haven't read your works. Well, I'll bet you're even more mysterious than your books. Readers only pretend to read books. They read them based merely on the name of the author and the brand and think that they've actually read them. Oh, so you're a, some snobbish, weird, pseudo-intellectual? No matter what I write in my books, they don't truly read anything. They just pretend to read so they can look smart and knowledgeable and keep up with the current fad. Why on earth should I expose myself to these people? Why indulge such trash? <laughs> I see. Looks like you're Madame Hachijo, all right. This person really is eccentric. There's no doubt about it. This is Hachijo Toya herself. She looks like a frog. Hachijo Toya is a mystery novelist who's become the center of discussion lately. It seems her books themselves have been highly praised, but it's her mysterious zebu that's attracted so much attention towards her lately. Last year, she managed to win several different awards for exceptional mystery novels offered by multiple large publishing companies, submitting each of her works under a different pen name. And after that, several highly regarded anonymous works were discovered, one after another, to have been stories she had written in the past under false names, and her popularity soared as she herself became more mysterious than her books. Despite all of this, the author herself never appeared in public, and everything about her was wrapped in a veil of secrecy. However, just a few days ago, this author finally made a public appearance for a book signing, showing up with a mask that covered his face and drawing even more public attention. And yet, apparently, even that had been a fake. Given this person's radically unconventional track record, it was hardly a surprise to hear her casually insult her friends like this. I know quite a lot about you too, Shirumiya Angie-san. The talk shows have been saying all sorts of things. I'm sure you've heard nothing good. Yes, nothing good at all. Apparently you employ and fire people on a whim, try to resolve everything with money and care nothing for the law as long as you get your way. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> However, I happen to like intelligent people like you. Is that why you agree to meet with me? Exactly. You're the only person who's managed to spot that uh, Itoi Kukuro Rego Namu is another pen name used by me. Hachijo Toya. Itoi Kukuro Rego Namu. Is that like... Itoi What the... What kind of weird name? That's actually quite impressive. Ito iku kuro re ko namu. It was a pretty strange pen name. However, if you match the Japanese syllables to numbers, you can read it as one one zero one nine nine six zero five seven six. This massive number is equal to eighteen to the eighth power. Eighteen to the eighth in Japanese Toya no Hachijo, uh, or in other words, Hachijo Toya. Very well done. I was quite impressed. Are you are you like uh, Alice from Virtue's Last Reward now? In fact, I was so impressed I decided to let you meet me in person. Welcome to my mansion, child of man. Her manner of speaking was extremely condescending, but perhaps because of her elegant manner, it didn't feel particularly irritating. What do you mean, child of man? This person had a sort of majestic grandeur. A grand grandeur, grandeur, about her which made that style of speech seem almost natural. At least that's how it felt to me. In fact, it felt almost as though this was the manifestation of some noble being who would have no need to show herself before mere humans under normal circumstances. Since I'm not particularly a fan of hers, I guess this is proof that her mysterious charisma really is nothing to be laughed at. And 
Uh, what are we doing here? However, I didn't come here to talk to Hachijo Toya, the mystery, mystery novelist. I'm interested in Ito Ikukuro Reigo Natmu, the mysterious web author who only released her works over the internet, around the Japanese parts of the internet. Ito Ikukuro is an extremely famous witch hunter, however she isn't a big opinion leader like Professor Otsuki. She's one of those message bottle forgers who are always the center of vigorous debate. Message bottle forgers are, as the name suggests, people who forge and post the contents of what pur a purport to be mysterious message bottles detailing the events of the Rakanjima incident. They claim to have discovered a new message bottle and post either a very similar counterfeit story or a new theory with their own interpretation of the truth, all of which is supposedly written by Ushiro Miyamaria. In so doing, they openly take on the name of Ushiro Miyamaria, writing up new bizarre tales as if they had been present themselves and knew the truth. They then send these stories out into the newest sea discovered by humankind, the internet, claiming that it's a third or fourth message bottle. All of the first forges were either simple pranksters or crooks trying to swindle the collectors. Eventually, though, people who claimed to have solved the riddles of the message bottle tales and reached the truth started to appear, and they started creating original works of their own, third and fourth message bottles from Ushiro Miyamaria, as though they had moved over to the riddle teller's side. These people rewrote the tale of the witch with whatever interpretations they wanted, and every once in a while, parts of their theories would gain big followings on the net. Some of these creations grew to be so widely trusted that they were believed to contain some grain of truth. The more rigid witch hunters openly despised these people, calling them forgers, counterfeiters, or just witches. Though they claimed to have reached the truth, they refused to tell anyone and created fake message bottles, though they test uh, as though testing everyone else. It was no surprise that more straight-laced witch hunters were seriously annoyed by these forgers. However, among those who simply liked to entertain themselves with the occult fantasy of Rokanjima, an extremely small number of accepted these creations as literary works, glad of these additions to the mysterious tale. Itoi Kukuro was the most highly regarded of these forgers. End of the Golden Witch. I read that one. That's one hell of a hobby you've got there, killing of other people's families however you like. <laughs> Did you come all the way here just to say that? I think not, final descendant of the Ushidomiya family. In her latest forgery end, she killed off seven members of my family, at least during the actual story. No, if you count Alliance and Banquet, the other forgeries she's made before now, then she's killed off most of my family in horrible ways over and over again. Of course I want to complain. However, all of her works are known for being in both form and level of perfection. The closest tales to those written by Yoshido Miya Maria herself, in particular, Ito Ikuguro's first forgery, Banquet of the Golden Witch, managed to fit everything, including Yoshido Miya Eifa's escape to Kuadorian. People wondered whether this might be the true story of Rokenjima, and it even made it onto the talk shows. So far, all of these tales have been nothing more than electronic text on the web. However, people will eventually realize that Ito Ikuguro is actually Hachijo Toya. When that happens, they'll become the works of that bizarre Hachijo, and no one will think of them as mere fan creations. People will probably start wondering if this might actually be a third message bottle she found and released under the guise of the story she herself wrote. When that happens, these stories will probably seem even more bizarre and credible. You're pretty cunning, aren't you? Why do you say that? You're doing this to make your forgeries seem more mysterious and more credible. And what do you mean by credible? Once you've gained credibility, your forgeries will rise to the level of truth. Rise to the level of truth? Hm, how foolish. Such a thing is unnecessary for my works. Are you saying that because your works are truth and not mere forgeries? Correct. They are truth. So there's no need for them to rise into anything. You are Maria Onechan. And you definitely weren't on Okanjima on that day, so how can you be so absurd as to call this the truth? Hey, don't lose your cool, lady. Shut up, what makes you think I'm losing my cool? Angie half realized that she had let her emotions get the better of her. She let out a sigh and shrugged. Your reason for coming here, it wasn't to yell at me for killing your family several times within my forgeries, correct? Hachijo had been smiling at Angie kindly, but in a condescending manner, or else like a mother might watch over a very small child. Angie realized this and was unable to suppress her irritation this time. Apparently Amakusa could tell that Angie was getting worked up. He joked around with her for a bit, so that they could start the conversation over again from the beginning. The thing you came here to hear, it's the truth that I have reached, is it not? Why are you so sure that you've reached the truth? Because I've understood all of the tales. 
and I'm asking you why you're so sure about that. Do you think the sun ever revolved around the Earth? Hajijo suddenly started talking about the Ptolemaic theory. Angie was about to tell her not to answer questions with more questions, but she quickly realized what Hachijo meant. Humans used to support the Ptolemaic theory. However, that theory has been rejected in the modern age. Does this mean that at the instant the theory was rejected, the sun stopped moving and the earth started revolving around the sun? Of course not. The truth doesn't change based on what humans believe. Then right now, your denial of my truth means exactly the same thing. The idea of heliocentrism was proposed by several scholars before Galileo, however it was hard to objectively prove for that theory using the scientific techniques available at the time. Even so, it didn't change what the truth was. And yet it moves. So you're saying the truth is still the truth whether you can prove it or not? Correct. In the future, when the full truth finally becomes known, people will look back and realize that I had already discovered it all along. Apparently Angie just couldn't stand Hachijo's attitude. She kept getting irritated and every time Amakusa would joke around until she settled down again. Gee, I wonder, how is it possible that you wouldn't like this person's attitude? However, there could be no mistake that Hachijo was a genius and had used her extraordinary intuition to form a most interesting outlook on the events that occurred on that island. That was why Angie had wanted to contact Itoi Kukuro and to hear her views. Still, this meeting truly had been fortunate for Angie. She hadn't been absolutely sure that Ito Ikukuro was Hachijo Toya. She hadn't thought that the publishing company would really contact the author, and moreover, she hadn't dreamt that the mysterious masked author would grant her an interview under such short notice. notice. The more she thought about it, the more she realized that the sum of the events leading to this meeting made for nothing short of a miracle. Yes, a miracle. After all, in almost all cases, I'd never be contacted by the publishing company and would leave for Nijima the next day. leave for Nijima, then go on to Rokkanjima. But haven't you already been there? And then give Onichan a Sakutaro stuffed animal, huh? Why a Sakutaro stuffed animal? My memory of the future is all muddled. My head hurts. Hachizo said something about showing Angie something good, rose from the sofa and headed for the study desk. When she turned her back, Amakusa asked Angie, who seemed to be troubled by something, if she was okay. Hey Amakusa, how long have I been here? What? You've been looking weird for a while now. What's going on? I can't remember how long I've been sitting here. You still half asleep? That's not it. I mean, I was able to get an appointment with Professor Otsuki, but the publishing company never got back to me about Itoi Kukuro. So in the end, I was stuck unable to do anything that entire day, right? Huh? Amakusa, you went to get that large black bag, didn't you? That's right. Just before we left for Nijima, Amakusa and I parted ways just one time. He said something about getting a weapon from an acquaintance of his, and he went to get that large black bag. Wasn't that today? What am I talking about? I mean, didn't I go to Nijima? Meet Captain Kawabata and inside the bed shop, uh huh? What? Something wrong. Did my confusion and uncertainty make me sigh out loud? Even though Hachijo's back was to me, she slowly turned around and smiled as though she had peered into my heart. No, it's nothing. Strange memories, ones that I, even I can't understand. I tried to hide my confusion but for some reason Hachijo had a strange glint in her eyes, as though she could read my mind. I have revived and killed your family several times within various forgeries, almost like a witch might. Reviving and killing them whenever you like. Endlessly. Sounds almost like Beatrice, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So please follow the lead of all those people on the web, and consider the possibility that I might be a witch. She took a thickly packed brown envelope out of a drop locked drawer. It appeared to be filled to the brim with printer paper. Perhaps this was a manuscript for one of her works. The neat letters written with a fountain pen on the envelope spelled out the word Dawn. There was no forgery by the name of Dawn, which must mean... Angie could tell. This was a new one. Hachijo's newest unreleased forgery, Dawn of the Golden Witch. 
One such as I, who knows everything, everything is boring. However, I don't dislike letting the ignorant read my words to see what kind of reactions they have at my works. And so, I want you to read it. You want me to read your newest work, which you've created as the new Endless Witch? Correct, child of man. Whether you resent it, resent it or admire it, you can help me forget my illness for a time. Let's put an end to this farce, shall we? Who are you? I don't remember ever meeting you like this. Yes, I did try to contact Haji Jotoya, but in the end I never got a chance to meet her. In other words, all of this is a falsehood. Whose piece am I this time? Sorry, but if you think you can tame Ushido Miya Angi so easily, you're making a big mistake. <laughs> yes, I hoped you'd be this interesting. She finally couldn't hold it back and burst out laughing. Gradually, the space around them seemed to be filled with a strange purple mist. The room itself seemed to twist and bend. Her figure also twisted, and after something that couldn't be described elapsed, her form changed to become just what she had called herself, a witch. Splendid! You did well to see through my veil. It seems I'm the type witches just love to cling to. You all have the same condescending tone towards humans. I figured you were a witch right away. The novelist sitting on the sofa was nowhere to be seen. Even Angie's bodyguard, who was supposed to be around at times like this, was gone. There was only a non-human figure relaxing in a large, orna ornate rocking chair. I find you truly intriguing, child of man. Your charming nature is the perfect medicine for my boredom. Yeah, well, I don't see anything charming about this. Why am I alive? Wasn't I killed in a pretty nasty way for breaking the rule about revealing my name? To be honest, I did doubt that those people would just let me go so easily. What kind of farce will I be forced to go along with this time? I really don't care. I'll just do whatever I can within the bounds of the role they give me, whatever I can to help Onichan. Of course, I understand. Even if he wins, he'll never come back to me. Even so, I'll just struggle on. I'll make sure Onichan comes back to the me of that day. No need to lose your temper. I am not asking you to be a piece. Then why did you summon me here? Don't tell me you want me to read this new story or whatever it is you've written. That's it exactly. I do not want you to be my piece. I have always been a mere observer, and I have no intention of sticking my neck into there again. I don't get it. What is it you want from me? Be an observer for me. An observer of the fragments Beatrice has woven. An observer? I don't really get it, but no deal. In the past, I observed the fragments through Battler's eyes. However, now that he has succeeded the position of Game Master, he is not a suitable observer. I am following this tale with true and earnest intentions. It would be such a waste to observe it through the eyes of Battler as he is now, like reading a detective novel backwards. When he is the Game Master? What on earth are you talking about? You must have no clue what it's all about. You want to know, don't you? I want to know too. What kind of tale will Battler weave now that he has taken the position of Game Master? Furthermore, I wish to search for the truth Battler reached as part of my own mental journey. My illness affects me gravely. If I do not think, I cannot even keep my heart beating. So, you want me to read your new picture book aloud to you? You might as well interpret it that way. In exchange, you will also be able to take part in your own journey of the mind. I do believe that even you have yet to reach the truth. I think you want to continue on the journey to find the truth. I don't owe you anything. Do not push your luck. I can be lenient at times, but such cases are rare. Angie hadn't yet reached the truth either. Though she knew that the game was little more than a toy for the amusement of those witches, she wanted it to resume so that she could follow the tale and close in on the King Hall truth. I might explore the tale to find the truth for myself, but I have no obligation to read it aloud until the end, for your sake. Understand? Angie was willing to read the story aloud, but she could quit at any time if this witch made her mad. She was in effect warning the witch not to annoy her. <laughs> of course, you call it a picture book, but to me, it is the only medicine for a fatal illness. I cannot take that medicine without you to assist me. In other words, it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. So you're telling me to read your book until you fall asleep, and in exchange you'll let me read it too. Is that right? Precisely, if you are willing to accept. I shall ask that you become my reader for a time. Well, it's nice to get my own title, but all you really want me to do is read books, right? 
Becoming my reader means the same as becoming my familiar. In other words, what is done against you will be done against me. I will not permit anyone to disrupt, disrupt my only interest, that being to read the rest of Beatrice's tale. I will not let Berncastle, Lambda Delta, or even Beatrice force anything upon you. This witch, who seemed to have an almost divine quality to her, spoke both quietly and forcefully. There was no threat in her words. However, even so, it was clear that she was on a different level than Berncastle and the other witches, and not at all to be taken lightly. So you'll offer me protection if I agree to read your book? Of course. What I want is for you to read aloud to me. I will not spare any who attempt to stand in the way of that. If my attitude seems arrogant to you, allow me to apologize, child of man. It may not seem so, but I am speaking to you with the utmost respect. Yeah, probably. Even that witch-like style of speech feels like it's gotta be the most respectful thing you've said in the last few hundred years. <laughs> When you're reading a book, do you tell it thank you very much before flipping through the pages? I guess it is like that. I understand. Just by agreeing to have a conversation with Angie, she was showing an incredible amount of respect and willingness to compromise. Angie shrugged, but she also nodded to show her consent. Sure, I'll be your reader. I get that you showed a ton of respect just by asking for my consent first. You understand well, child of man. My name is Angie, by the way, not Child of Man or whatever. Huh, very well. As proof of my respect for you, I will acknowledge your name. For her, acknowledging human names was like acknowledging the names of all the leaves scattered across the ground. So her acknowledging Angie's name was a miracle. No, it was immensely good fortune. From this point forth, Oshida Mia Angie will serve as a reader and Miko to the Witch of Theater going. Witch of Theater going? What the fuck kind of witch is that? <laughs> you also have the witch of guarding the plants in the garden, uh, watering the plants in the garden, or the witch of tuning my guitar, or the witch of uh, doing grocery shopping. You have the witch of uh, going to the park, and the witch of playing video games. Featherine Augustus Aurora. It kind of sounds like somebody on a unicorn forum who like has a love of hearts and unicorn smileys as their avatar and talks about how the crystal in their room helps them with a positive <laughs> whatever energy <laughs> until you finish reading I shall bring calamity to all who attempt to hinder your task sorry my voice uh, sometimes goes down like that when the Witch of Theater going, Featherine, spoke this, Angie was wrapped in a bright light. Angie didn't feel any particular change herself. Oh, she's already there. Featherine Augustus Aurora, the majestic Witch of Theater going, drama and spectating. She has tired of life after a thousand years and constantly repeats the cycle of life and death. In the past, she served as the master for several games as a legendary witch, but her legend, glory, and memory have already disappeared into the past and have been forgotten. Only the solemn medal she wears on her chest contains those memories. Oh, right, there's a medal. The horseshoe-shaped object floating around her head is a memory aid device. Oh, I thought she had horns. <laughs> It rec records her name, appearance, and other aspects of her personality. She is so old that she would not be able to preserve her own individuality without this. Are you like... You, you would be best friends with the Gazel Ministry. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Xenogears reference. Which Aaron hasn't played yet. I mean, he played it. We tried to play it together, but <coughs> then we didn't have time anymore. So, uh, actually a shame. But he should just play it himself. Angie didn't feel any particular change herself, but she definitely had been given something that only non-humans could sense. It signified that from this point forward, Angie would be the witch of theater going subject. That didn't mean that Angie would gain some sort of special power, but at the very least it probably meant that anyone wanting to cause her harm would first have to take on Featherine herself. <laughs> Your name is pretty long. Sounds like some Roman person from the history books. What should I call you? Those not familiar with me call me Augustus Aurora. After all the respect you've shown me, it's only fitting that I respond in kind. I'll call you Featherine. 
Any problems? Not at all. For an ailing witch such as myself, even being called by my first name will be an experience to be treasured and pondered over a child of man. I have a name. I told you, it's Angie. Even conversations like this are pleasant every once in a while. Angie, my Miko. Miko was like a maiden, right? Shrine maiden. Angie accepted her role. She would observe the story with the Witch of Theater going. The curtain was rising on the sixth tale. Okay, then let the curtain rise indeed. Yeah, but you definitely need to play Xenogears. Either you play it yourself, or maybe when Aiden is a bit older, I can come over regularly again. <laughs> 